Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. I am here today with Art Joya Sharing for a tutorial of sorts or an idea for you to do to do condensing down. Now this idea was not mine. This original idea came from Cindy Utter and then there was a group of us from Intervals of Sanity that talked about it and everybody whipped out their stuff and showed it to me and they go, do you have any containers? I was like, I don't know. Well, guess what? I did. I have an empty Dina Wakely scribble stick container. As a matter of fact, I have two, an air and a spare. And when I fill one up and I get better, then I might fill up the second one with the same type stuff. Um, so this is the idea. I'm going to condense down my um, Prima paints that I own currently right now. Sorry, it's noisy. The classics. Tropicals, Pastel Dreams, and Decadent Pies into some sort of a condensed version. Now these are half pans in each one of these. This is a half pan. And I didn't know this, but all this time I've had these, this silly thing comes out. What was I doing? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Anyway, so they come out. But if you pull this metal piece back a little bit, this should also come off too. So this is a half pan. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these and I am going to make a new watercolor set with my Primas in here. Now I'm doing this the way I think that Cindy Utter, Peg Robinson, and um, Gina Bierens did it. So uh, this might be a combination of, you know, the grief of us talking about it, and all the ideas are muddled, it, uh, muddled up in my head. So I can't give credit totally to this part is this person, this part is that person. It was a collective discussion. All right, so I do remember they said don't use magnets because they rust, but to use the um, putty. So when I was at Michael's this morning, I found this Aline's um, Instant Tacky Putty. I didn't care that it was Aline's. I just wanted the putty so I could come home and do this. So... There are 80, 80 pieces in here. See, how they're very small. Look at that. They're very tiny. But my half pans aren't that stinking big either. So there you go. All right, so I'm going to take a little piece of the putty. And it looks like a chiclet. <laughs> I think I need something to cut it with so that I can get it apart. I'm not trying to cut it really with, you know, because it's too hard it's just that it's rubbery so what my intent is is to group all my colors together I don't want them spread apart I want all my greens together all my yellows together all my purples together you know and then black and brown and white whatever so let me see if I can do this let's start with and frankly I don't care what sets they come from I'm just interested in the color so I'm going to re-swatch my stuff. Well, we'll see how this goes. I don't know. <laughs> I may mix it up so bad that uh, I won't know where to swatch stuff, which is a thought right now. Hmm. All right, so I want to take this green and then put the putty on the bottom and kind of form it to the bottom of the half pan. And then I'm going to stick that bad boy down. And it's not coming out. Success! Yay! <laughs> I think what I might do is cut my cards apart. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut these cards apart, and I'm going to lay this on top of... All right, lay down flat there, dude. I'm going to lay this on top of here, so when I go to swatch, I know what color will be what, you know in the proper place. All right, so here's another green. All right, so this is going to be really boring for you to watch me do the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut off the camera and I'm going to get the majority of it finished. And then I'm going to show you what I've come up with and talk to you about the process of it and how it went. All right, I will see you on the other side. Okay, as you can see, I am almost finished. And I've been trying, I cut all my, um, 
all my swatch pieces apart and I put them in order according to going across this way. And what's my last one to put in here? Oh, this nice frosted white. Ah, which, there we go. Didn't think it was going to come out of the pan. Is that all of them? Yes, sir, it is. Okay, so, ooh, color came out. So this is what I did. I took the putty pieces that were, you had to cut them in pieces, stick it on the bottom. I just mashed it down to kind of keep it within the confines of the rectangle here. And then I put it in and kind of mashed it down for a second. Now, there were 80 pieces in that packet, Aline's putty, tacky putty or whatever they call this stuff. Ugh. Um, and I'm going to put it back in the package because I still have places to put more half pans. I can add more later. I think this is the shiny shimmery one. So this one's a short row. There you go. Alright, so all my pans are empty. Now I only own four of these. And I think there is either five or six in the series or the yeah, of the Prima paints, but I'm probably going to hang with what I've got here. I, I put so many in here that I need a place to mix because if I put my, um, I think what I'll do is I'll do my swatch on watercolor in order according to what's here and then I will go and have it laminated so I can lay it in here and it's not going to get wet and then when I need to take it out it'll be okay and I can use this side for mixing because I think I might like to put more in here eventually. I have nowhere to put the water brush or anything like that but that's not my concern because mostly I do my watercolor at home and if I go on the road I'll just take a water brush stick it in my purse and it'll be good enough. Okay so I did not do these colors according to what was pleasing for everyone else or what was warm and cool and proper and in the sets. I did what appeals to my eye and my eye um, likes groupings of the same color or that kind of thing together. Um, I did greens, then I did versions of blue and I had enough to go down into the four here. I did yellow, yellows and oranges, oranges, um, browns, shades of browns all across here, pinks, reddish, purplish, uh, what are these? I think these are the only two purples I have, and this is lavender. Then I have a real red. Then there is a, um, what is this one? It's a, a plain ordinary white, as this one is a frosted white. This is a silver, and this is a frosted silver, and this is just plain black. And the sides are kind of funky because these tins are rounded in the corners, and the pans are all um, straight. So it looks like it's a little off, but that's only because I can't shove it up to the corner because it's rounded. There's no corner. All right, so now I'm going to swatch all my stuff, and I'm going to figure out how to try to swatch it. And then I'm going to try to figure out how to get it laminated because I do not own a laminator. So that's going to be a little tricky. I'll work it out. All right, so I'll see you guys in a few minutes. Sort of. Okay, so I took some, is it Fabriano uh, watercolor paper, divided it up into little squares. Not exactly the best job, but, you know, it's just going to be a swatch card. So it'll fit in here just fine no problem it'll slide around but no big deal um, and now I'm going to swatch each one of mine and the ones that have names or numbers on them I will put down at the bottom because some of the um, sets had names for all of the pans some of them only had numbers and some of them you know they had nothing so um, I'm gonna do exactly the way they did it that way if it's a number I need to order by or it's a name, if I need to refill the pans, then I will know exactly what it is I'm ordering. All right, so I'm going to swatch now. Yeehaw! Okay, so I finished swatching, and they're a little bit wet. But I had a thought while I was swatching is that I don't need to um, laminate this. I have clear contact paper. So what I'll do is I'll put the contact paper on both sides, seal it in, and I'm done. And it hasn't cost me anything except for the tack stuff to go on the back of these. I already had the pans, already had the old tin, had the watercolor paper, 
everything. So, it, you know, how I always talk about new tools and I'm very excited about new stuff, but sometimes the old stuff is great, like this. All right, so I'm going to laminate it and then I'll be back. Okay, so I'm going to close this and get this out of the way. Here's my contact paper. And I dried this off. Let's see, do I want to do it this way? I guess it doesn't really matter. I just want it. Oops, contact paper needs better scissors than those. Evidently, those aren't sharp enough. Oh my. That's a huge thing that has to be fixed. All right, let's try that. Okay, um, so let's peel the contact paper back, lay it down as best we can. I don't know about you guys, when I touch sticky stuff, it sticks forever. Of course, when I want it to stick, it doesn't. When I don't, it does. All right, where's the end? Okay, here we go. And then, just to make life simple, I still have some leftover contact paper I can throw in my cart. I'm going to cut this extra stuff off. I know there's people that use this extra stuff for something, but I have so much stuff now. I'm trying to get rid of some of it. All right, so there's that. Now I'm going to take a card from a hotel, you know, those credit card thingies. Well, if I can get one out, I'm just kind of make sure everything's mashed down. Now, I don't think this is going to change the brightness or the, you know, the colors. It may be a little bit, but look, I'm no watercolor person. I don't know one brand from the other. I hear about them, but I don't know diddly. So this is good enough for me. Now I'm just going to cut, I'm going to leave a little edge on it, and I'm just going to cut it apart. I mean, cut it off the excess. Cut it apart. <laughs> and there we have it. So, you do not need to laminate if you have clear contact paper. I don't own a laminator. Now, there it is. It's all done. All right, so this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio on behalf of Art Joy Sharing to show you how to pare down four pans into one leftover pan with little or no supplies with buying extra supplies. So how's that? It's crooked. <laughs> does it matter? Why, yes, it does. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. Oh, my frustrated perfectionist is showing. Ooh. Alrighty, so let's trim a little off. You know, if I was smart, I'd use a paper cutter. But some days, the brain cells are out to lunch. And today is their day. <laughs> okay, come on, cut. There we go. Not too bad for, a, you know, a, a homemade job, right? I didn't want to spend any more money. I already spent money on the tacky stuff when I have enough to do another pan because there's there were 80 pieces in it. I don't know how many of this I have. I haven't counted these things. I think there's 11, 12 pans in each. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 times 1, 2, 3, 4 is 44, 45, 46, 47, 48. Okay, so there's 48. I used 48 
And then I have 80 total of those little chiclet looking things. All right, so this is it. Man, that looks so cool. I'm so excited. And now that I have the cheat sheet, I feel even better. I might be able to put one of those, um, let's see, a little Pintel fit in here. Oh, that's kind of fat. Well, maybe if I lay it on its side. <laughs> All right, I'm done. Isn't that cool? Okay. See you next month. Bye.